One thing you definitely learn. I know my communication with Roger should have been better in that situation. Maybe on the third down, we do something a little bit different. His mindset was, we got four downs here. It comes down to communication, and that's something I got to learn from and be better with him. Stephen A., yeah. are you satisfied with LeFleur's explanation? No, I'm not. I'm not satisfied at all. Um, you know, um, I don't know the man personally. Um, I happen to believe that he's done a damn good job as head coach of the Green Bay Packers. He's 26 and 6 in his two years there. Um, you know, 13 and 3 each season, back to back appearances in the NFC Championship game. That's success. That's not failure. Um, and I know that, you know, he, I, I'm told he doesn't like me too much because he doesn't like the name. Well, I say his name, Le Fleur. You know, he doesn't like that. But when you heard that, to your yes, credit, that's you right. stopped. I stopped that until he annoyed me in the NFC now Championship. Now it's back to Le But no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go back to that. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I don't know him, but let me say this. I don't give a damn how he feels about me. I don't pretty much like him either. Uh, and, I, and I mean that only in the respect that how I believe he has treated Aaron Rodgers. Now, Aaron Rodgers is not going to say anything, and I'm not talking about just him. I'm talking about the organization as a whole. And I shouldn't say I don't like him directly because, again, I've never met him. I don't know him. I've never spoken to him or whatever the case may be. What I'm saying is, is that when I see behavior that's indicative of the mentality, you know what, just go on. You got your money. Just do what we tell you to do. I always got a problem with that when it comes to talent because you need talent to go out there and execute your game plan. If you are management, if you are a coach, a manager, or anything like that, it doesn't matter what you do if those folks don't go out and execute. So you, there's a level of appreciation that you have to have for people that bring that little extra something to the equation. Long before Matt LaFleur ever arrived in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers was a Super Bowl champion, and Aaron Rodgers, from a talent perspective, was considered one of, if not the greatest talent at the quarterback position we ever saw. Why? You know, if you're, if you're Matt LaFleur, when do you look in the mirror and say, damn, I'm pretty lucky to have this job? Because who gets to coach Aaron Rodgers every day? And, oh, by the way, when I was an offensive coordinator, I had the 27th-ranked offense in the National Football League with the Tennessee Titans. Who does that? So you would think that this is a guy that you really, really lean on heavily, and you really let him know, you know, you're that guy. Now, again, I'm not privy to their conversations. I'm not pretending to be. But when you talk about communication, how in God's name are you the head coach of the Green Bay Packers? It's an NFC championship game. And you literally say the issue was communication. Communication with who? Now, if you were supposed to be talking to Marquez Valdez-Scantlin or Devontae Adams or somebody like that, that would be different. How in God's name do you have a communication? Is there a communication gap with Aaron Rodgers when you, you, you got the job because you coached offense? I mean, you don't know that? So I'm not buying that by any stretch of the imagination. I think it's a disgusting excuse. I applaud him for acknowledging it and admitting it, but I think it's an egregious, egregious error. And the reason why I feel that way is because in the end, you gave Aaron Rod you gave Tom Brady the ball back with two minutes and literally said, all we need is two first downs and the game is over. And you took the ball out of the hands of Aaron Rodgers, which I believe is unforgivable. And, Max, last but not least, was I not validated by the great Joe Montana the other day? You don't take the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hands, and the damn sure can't be to give it to Tom Brady. Anybody and their grandmother knows that, except Matt LaFleur. Well, it's ridiculous. I think this has nothing to do with communication. Nothing to do with communication. I don't know where communication, well, if Aaron Rodgers would have known he only had three downs to work with, or he would have said, no, I want to go for it. Come on, get out of here. This is about decision-making on LaFleur's part. Decision-making, not communication. Telling Rodgers what's going to happen, it's the decision itself. Now, look, you're in the red zone. A trip to the Super Bowl is on the line. You have the MVP as quarterback. Until Mahomes, I think, the most talented guy who ever played football at the quarterback position, Aaron Rodgers. And he's the MVP this year. You're in the red zone on fourth down. And you opt, instead of letting the MVP try to win, to hand the ball to the GOAT. As Stephen A. says, get two first downs, they kick a field goal. You two first downs for Tom Brady. Not let your own guy try to win. Give it to, not let the MVP try to win. Hand it to the GOAT to beat you. 
That is an outright blunder. And you know me, Stephen A., I, I like the analytics, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes if that's what the analytics are telling you, then common sense says the analytics are failing to capture some piece of reality that, that, that your own brain will be able to understand intuitively right away. Because analytics are a tool, they're not the only one. It was a blunder on the part of LaFleur. And he can say, well, look, I thought we'd get a stop. I believed in our defense. In fact, we did get a stop. And, and yeah, right, the call went against you. Yes, that's something you have to factor in. It's not just that you have to get a stop. It's you have to have, you hope that the whole call also doesn't go against you. But the bottom line is, it's an outright blunder to hand the ball, to take the ball out of Aaron Rodgers' hand in the red zone on fourth down with a trip to the Super Bowl on the line and hand it to Tom Brady to beat you, as Stephen A. said, to get two first downs to do it. And, and for him to now really confuse the issue, it's, it's smoke and mirrors now. He's like, oh, don't look at me. It's just a communication issue. Decision-making, not communication. I say he says communication. I'm going to take it at his word because I think that the Green Bay Packers, long before Matt LaFleur ever arrived, had a history of having this mentality. You play, we run the organization. Shut the hell up and go do what we tell you to do. That's how they treated Aaron Rodgers for years before Matt LaFleur ever arrived. And I know Gutekinds is not a GM as opposed to, you know, Ted Thompson or somebody, and I get all of that. I understand it. Uh, but in the end, what it comes down to is the fact that a mentality emanating from the hierarchy of the Green Bay Packers organization has essentially had that attitude with Aaron Rodgers. And because of that, obviously, they're the ones that hired Matt LaFleur, and I think Matt LaFleur, in, in certain subtle ways, adopted that same mentality, which is why there was a communication gap. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.